Hello, welcome to Biostock Studio here in Lund. Spotlight listed Carbiotics, a biotech based here in Lund, has had a busy news flow of late, and here to talk to us more about it is CEO Christopher Cook. Welcome, Christopher. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Uh, well, uh, recently uh, you just had the go-ahead uh, for a rights issue, and uh, what's the timeline for the rights issue? I, you probably can't say much about it, but... Well, I can't say much about it uh, other than the fact that it's planned for Q2, so yeah. news will come out uh, in the near future. Um, and, well, speaking of the rights issue, uh, a lot of the proceeds will go towards Carbiaxis, the Carbiaxis production. Mm -hmm. um, um, when is the opening ceremony for your new production in Biouf? Uh We've also communicated that that will happen in, in the second quarter. So uh, after the startup, so to speak. And then we'll have uh, an invitation that will go out to uh, select uh, investors and others as well. And uh, to more celebrate the, the opening. And uh, well, you've also talked about uh, the upscale of production. Um, how will you fund this expansion? Well, we've also communicated that uh, uh, you know we're doing our best to put in what we consider as uh, uh, low low capex financing alternatives, and that's obviously leasing agreements initially. And then, as we move on to the larger projects, then we'll be looking at uh, other legal constructions such as joint ventures, and then bringing in external capital that way, uh, with an option to purchase those facilities at some point in the future as sales volumes increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. So smart financing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> you also recently signed a uh, sales agreement um, uh, for Carbiaxis, and the, the deal was with a Swedish company called Fiber High. Um, how much of the uh, of your Carbiaxis production capacity will this uh, deal entail? Well, this particular agreement uh, entails a, a right of first refusal, so they can essentially purchase 100 percent of all production capacity during 22 and 23 as well. Uh, obviously, if they decline any of, that, any of that capacity, that can be provided to other companies that we're uh, targeting, and we have what 10 qualified leads we're we're following up on. Mm -hmm. yeah. How is the sales process uh, for this deal, and is is LinkGut included in this? Yeah, uh, LinkGut is is part of our our competitive value proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we initially targeted health and wellness companies because it allowed us to sort of get the weeds out of the system and build up the application, which has been great. Um, but this is definitely uh, what we see as a, a competitive advantage for our modulator sales, so they can allow their customers to, to validate the effect of our uh, active ingredients. Uh, so in this case, uh, if they want to use a, a dedicated partner, uh, we certainly have those, and they don't want to integrate the API. Uh, or if they want to do that, uh, we can do that through the LinkGut API service. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, definitely, this is the future of, of uh, food and, and medicine, uh, ultimately uh, embracing transparency and the personalization of different modifications. And what is your goal in terms of sales this year? Uh, we haven't gone out publicly to communicate that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a transition phase from development to commercialization. Uh, we have communicated our uh, ambitions for 2024 and, and uh, 2025, mm -hmm. and uh, we yeah definitely working towards those uh, goals. Um, shifting gears slightly, you recently announced that uh, uh, Dr. Richard Rosenblum is joining mm -hmm. you as a new CMO. Mm -hmm. um, what will he add to to the company? Well, we've been working with Richard since uh, 2019, so since the the IPO, and he's been extremely valuable in terms of providing key advice. Uh, for our modulator development pipeline. Uh, so getting him on board in terms of allocating more time is going to be definitely great. He has decades of experience uh, from both uh, nutraceuticals, medical foods, and pharmaceuticals. And uh, he will act as a, as a mentor for our regulatory and scientific team. So I'm very happy to have Richard on board. Mm -hmm. Well, finally, uh, the last 30 days uh, have brought a lot of news to from uh, Carbiotics. Uh, my question for you is, uh, is all this activity meeting expectations? Well, you're correct. Definitely, you're correct. Uh, sometimes news comes all at once, and in this case, uh, a lot of news has come. Uh, we had pr 12 press releases the past uh, 30 plus days. That's essentially a press release every second business day. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a lot for the, the market to absorb. But uh, uh, makes me extreme, <laughs> extremely happy, definitely. Uh, you know, if we look at what's come out, you know, we announced the type 2 diabetes study, uh, which is extremely significant for the development of getting a, a medical food uh, to market. Uh, the addition of Richard, you know, getting that clinical competence in-house is, is extremely important. 
uh, quite recently the expansion of our, our lab. So now we have separate labs for microbial therapeutics development, prebiotics development, and then the, the link gut service, which is great. Um, and that's obviously going to help facilitate the two uh, development projects we have. So with mm -hmm. GrowPro, the, pre, uh, the pea fiber, uh, as well as the, uh, the oat fiber project we have. And this is a good hedging mechanism for uh, potential uh, uh, supply chain constraints. And then sort of the hygiene factors of getting ISO 9000 and then expanding that eventually to our production site, getting our first patent approved in the U.S., which is going to be extremely instrumental when it comes to uh, uh, negotiations with partners, especially in the context of joint venture structures. Uh, but most importantly, yeah, making progress on our three milestones. So I mean, getting our first site up and running and starting that site uh, is definitely a key milestone. And then uh, recently announcing the expansion uh, of that site as well, or our plans to do that. Uh, Grass timeline uh, and launch date of the product is critical. And again, this is a self-affirmation process we're talking about. So it's us with the experts saying we think the product is safe. But getting that in place is, is important for the market, certainly. And obviously, the first sales agreement. You know, Without the first sales agreement, you don't get the second or the third or the fourth. <laughs> so getting that key reference is, uh, is extremely important as well. And then uh, obviously, we'll be following up with the, uh, you know, the 10 qualified leads we have. One area I'm, I'm quite surprised of is, is actually the, uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the market side. Uh, uh, I, I thought there would be a bit more interest, I think, in that regard, uh, a bit more positive movement in terms of uh, increasing positions, uh, especially given the fact that I communicated previously that the uh, offer, the planned uh, rights issue, is, is very competitive and quite attractive as well. And uh, I sort of bent over backwards to make sure that the, that the deal was sort of in line with what is typically provided to sort of a, a, a limited group of investors that typically um, participate in, in more direct issues. Uh, I even gave up a majority of my rights to a key strategic uh, investor who has like a 10 to 20 year horizon in the company. But, but let's see, maybe the market surprises me in terms of uh, this uh, increased level of interest uh, going into that rights issue as well. But uh, from my side, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a good deal and uh, uh, the market should appreciate it, definitely. Well, it'll be exciting to continue following Carbiotics and uh, we thank you so much for joining us today. Well, it's always a pleasure to come in here and, and uh, sit down and, and uh, answer very good questions. Thank you.